Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Mancunian Way. Um, tonight, as you noticed, there was not the normal intro because we want to pay our respects to Manchester City legend Francis Lee CBE, who has yesterday we got the news sadly he had passed away after a, a battle with lung cancer. Um, very sad. Um, but what I wanted to do tonight was just, and tonight's not about views. It's not about, we've not even monetized the video tonight because I'm not bothered about getting money from it. This is, this channel was set up a long time ago, not only for people's entertainment for Manchester City, but also to not educate, because educate's the wrong word, but to, to also talk about our history. Because believe it or not, Manchester City has a very rich and great history. Maybe it's not as big as some other clubs, but it has, um, it does have a history. And Francis Lee has been a part of the Manchester City family for so long now that it, he does feel like, you know, you know, people call him one of the three amigos alongside Colin Bell, who sadly passed away as well. Mike Summerbear and Francis Lee, the, the three players now. I, I never had the pleasure to see any of them play. Um, my father has told me so much about them because these were the this was my dad's heyday watching these three in the pomp. Uh, and we're just gonna talk about it because it wasn't just a fantastic player for Manchester City, he was a, he was also a chairman and did he always have the did he always have the easiest time as chairman? No, he didn't. I'm just gonna adjust my camera. Sorry about that. Did he always have the easiest time as chairman? No, he didn't. But he always wore his heart on his sleeve. Did he always make the right decisions as a chairman? No. Did he always have the best interests of Manchester City at heart, though? Yes. Manchester City was 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 the be all and end all for him. He cared about this football club, you know. There was so much, and I, I remember listening to so many interviews, but I'll go through that anyway, um, through the dark times of Manchester City. Francis Lee was a, an integral part of that as well. Um, but anyway, gentlemen, just while I say a few hellos to everyone, um, we brought Pat and Alan on. So, Alan, good evening. Do you want to... Give your initial thoughts when you heard the news, sadly, of uh, Francis Lee's passing. You're on mute, mate. I'm mute. I'm gonna, I'll unmute you. You're all right. You're done now. Yeah, yeah. I was in bed when I heard the news uh, over in Melbourne, but um, I remember seeing him play, uh, not just for City, just uh, I was very, very young, but also for Derby County when he was controversially sold to Derby. Who, who then went on to win the league and take the title off us at that point. Um, uh, Francis Lee is, you're quite right by saying, an integral part uh, of Manchester City's history. He's a local lad. He's from West Orton in Bolton. And he was he started at Bolton Wanderers and then City signed him in, in the late 60s and part of the, the league title winning side in 68, and then the FA Cup, the League Cup, and the European Cup Winners' Cup. So basically, he's won everything with City, including the European Trophy, um, and he was part of that. I played for England in the 1970 World Cup Finals in uh, Mexico, um, and um, it was it, 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 uh, and was probably one of the best strikers the club has seen. Um, he was renowned for his diving in the penalty box and, and then getting up and Leathering the hell out of it for penalties, and and is, is the leading penalty taker as far as amount of goals in the Premier in the top division ever. Um, and um, I think the things that I remember, he was one of my dad's heroes as well, Martin. And you know, part of the three with Nelly Young as well in that side, um, has, has sadly passed away. And I remember as a kid. Uh, a few things because he was he, he, he's a local lad that also played cricket for West Ham when he finished playing uh, football and played when he was 
were done in a charity cricket game and Man City played and Francis Lee played in that. And he was actually a good cricketer, to be fair. Um, it's a really, really sad day because when City went through a hard time, he bought £3 million worth of shares in the club from Peter Swales and, try, and helped and tried to help turn the club around. But the damage that Peter Swales had caused at the club, it was very, very hard for him to turn things around, to be fair. Um, and um, But his heart is in the, you know, he put his money where his mouth is, and but his heart weighs where the, where the club is as well. So he, de- he deserves a lot for me um, at the club because, you know, he put his money where his mouth is and tried to help the club get out of the shit that Francis that, that Peter Swells had caused. To be fair. Well, we will go into that, Alan, because I yeah. have later on in the show. Because yeah, I think the prime example of putting his money where his mouth was was in 1995 when he yeah. shelled out of his own money for yeah. one Georgian little maestro when we didn't yeah. have the money to buy him. Um, yeah. and he stumped up the two million quid to get him over yeah. from Dynamo to Blisa. Uh, yeah. Pat, now obviously, Francis Lee, what are your initial thoughts on the uh, the sad news? yesterday yeah sad day for um all blues out there of course you know i i can only offer what i've seen from a distance basically and you know generationally i I never got to really see what the man what the man was the quality of the player there was all i can do is just listen to the stories and those that were there and and sort of just take it all in just absorb it and, and things like that but you know, one one that stood out for me was I spent a bit of time just scrolling through social media and people just sharing their stories and their experiences with Francis Lee. Was um, there was a, there was one guy who posted a photo of um, of him as a young kid at Main Road with um, with uh, Francis Lee. You know, by then he was already chairman of the club, and the the thing that the, everybody was uh, having more of a laugh of was uh, the fact that the man behind the camera taking the photo happened to be Alan Ball. So it just shows. Um, where everybody saw their loyalties light at that, at that time during the, during the dark days of the club as well. But, you know, that's to me, that's symbolistic of, of a man like Francis Lee because, you know, he has seen the, extre- the he's seen every extreme of this club from from playing in the success or the success of the uh, the old era to, you know, being, being there in the doldrums, you know, of the, the start yeah. of the modern era of football as well too. So, um, you know, it was it was a huge part of that triumvirate of um, our, you know, pre Abu Dhabi takeover of our great strongest, you know, strongest ever era for the club. So, um, you know, it's, yeah, it's a sad day for everybody. And, um, you know, I, I, my thoughts go out to Mike Summerby as well. So I'm sure he's hurting, you know, they're, they're great teammates and, and good friends. And, you know, he wasn't necessarily from, from what I saw, you know, it wasn't necessarily like for the younger, for the younger generational blue as well too, you know, maybe didn't see him from time to time at the ground and things like that. But from what we heard from people that met him, you know, in recent years at the Etihad, they always said he, you know, was always willing to have a photo, always have a chat, and talk all things blue and you know everything wonderful about Manchester and things like that. So, um, yeah, it's a sad day, you know. It's, it, it it takes my mind back to you know obviously losing Colin Bell as well too, and you know that was that was particularly disappointing because it was right in the depths of COVID, so you know you didn't have a chance to spend time with your friends and talk about how great those players were, or, or you know share experiences with people who were there. So, um, yeah. Yeah, it's 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 a sad day, and you know we just hope he's at peace now. You know, you never want to wish you know sort of any, you know. For me, it's just like you know when when someone has cancer, you wonder like what's the difference between living and being alive. And you know, if he was in pain, I just hope he's now at peace. So for me, you know, it's he sounds like he was a great man and uh, offered so much to the club. And uh, yeah, he'll be um, he'll be sorely missed. Yeah, I mean, just to give you some initial facts on uh, Funny Lake. He was signed by Joe Mercer in 67 in the yeah. hope um, £60,000 we paid Bolton Wanderers at the time. Uh, that would actually go on to help Blues land their first league, uh, the first division title in his first ever season. Lee did, wo- did wear the number seven shirt for his debut against Wolverhampton Wanderers, where he did replace the, the great Stan Bowles as well, who seemed to have come into his own with four goals. Um Lee did have a proven track record at Bolton, obviously. He'd made his debut at 16 years of age, um, where he played first-team football for seven years, and he'd notched a very, very, very good, very, you know, more than one in two, actually. 92 goals in 132 games for Bolton, um, which obviously then made 
the, the late, also the late, great Joe Mercer alongside uh, Malcolm as well, shell out the £60,000 for him. Um, and then he went on to create that that trio between Summer B and Bell and himself that, you know, and you think about it, you've got Neil Young and things like that in that team. And they went on and they did win the title, believe it or not, all the way up at St. James's Park, uh, yeah. where they ran out for three winners. Now, what I wanted to do is there's a very iconic um, photograph from that day, from that game, which was this one of Francis Lay up at St. James's Park celebrating the title win, uh, 4-3. Mm-hmm. I mean... <laughs> That's the final goal, wasn't it? Four, yeah, I mean, three, to come four, on, three. your first season to win the league, that is just remarkable, isn't it? Yeah. I, I know people do it now. They do it, you know, Haaland does it now. But back then, it was a very different... It was a different game. It was a different everything. You know, he, he, he came with a lot of expectation from what my dad told me there was a lot of this guy's gonna be you know goal scorer everyone talks about his antics i always remember that dive you know towards the referee um that, Is that george? was it george best it was the united game yeah, the, 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 yeah. The, me, me, me dad waxes lyrical about it and and you know what and you know what it's sad in a way but it's good because with me dad's alzheimer's He's remembering a lot more from his his childhood and his younger days. So a lot a lot of the memories from Manchester City and their pomp mm. have come back to him a lot more. So I'm hearing I'm hearing a lot more detail about these stories. You know, he's told me all about Dennis Stewart's over head kick about thirty odd times, and it's amazing to hear because I you, was you, there. You, well, of course, but the, yeah. <laughs> you don't hear about these things because. I think as a football club or as fan base, we always look at the here and now when we don't, I always feel we don't big it up. But from that, to, to go to Newcastle within your first season, go and win it 4-3, um, well, was just amazing. It was just amazing. I mean, I mean I'll mean, i give you, I'll give you I mean, that, that team he played in up at Newcastle was, um, I'll just read it out to you. There was Mulhern, Brook, Pardo, um, Doyle, Heslop, Oaks, Lee, Bell, Summerbet, Young, and Coleman were the 11 that went up to St. James's Park. Do you know there's one, you know there's one thing the about that back. team? Go on, Martin. Do you know there's one thing about that, Sam? It's the last all English player uh, team to win the title. Every single person in that team was English. That was the last all English team to win the title. That's a, that's a trivia was, question for you. It was part of it. It's, and you think about it, I mean, do you know the sad thing is, because people said to me about Colin Bell, Colin Bell, we didn't get to appreciate or celebrate his life and his career as much, because obviously there was the, the dreaded pandemic at the time. And that seemed to have not... not gone under the, the radar, but it didn't seem to hit home as much because of the pandemic. Mm. But when you realise it, and I listened to a, an interview by Mike Summer today with our sitter, and he talks about it, Bell and Lee have now gone. And yeah. you can just see what it means to him. He's the last one out of the three. Mm. He's the last one. Yeah. And, and it does make you realise and... I, I've said it a thousand times. They need that trio statue up. Yeah, they need that trio good. statue. Well, yeah. up and while, while Mike is still, with all due respect, but while Mike is still around, they need to get that yeah. statue up. Yeah, they really do. Yeah, um, yeah. The thing that the thing that stands out for me the most with 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 Bell's passing was um, just seeing Mike Summerby. You know, look like he was in tears there, just standing on his own in the middle of Old Trafford. You know, when they were doing the. You know when they're doing the the the, the honor circle on that too before kickoff, that sort of stuff still with me, just symbolistic. Not of obviously like Colin's passing, but just the fact that there wasn't anybody else there, you know, to to basically share in the sorrow of it all, you know, sort of thing. But if I can just add one thing, I think it's um it's quite poetic in a way that you know Francis Lee is the part passes away on the anniversary of um you know, his, uh, his record being broken as the uh, the last player, you know, the last player to score a, a hat-trick for City in a Manchester derby. 
Yeah, because you, you could because before this time last year it was Phil Foden before Erling Haaland and Phil Foden did it in one game. It was uh, it was the best part of about fifty years, you know, uh, to, since uh, Francis Lee did it. Mm. Yeah, I'm just it, showing it, by the way. There's some photographs that I've got up, some pictures, images. This, um, it, 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 is there's some iconic um, memories of Francis Lee when he left as well. One when he scored the goal at, Derby, uh, at Main Road for Derby. Um, and uh, we should, everyone should look on YouTube for these points. But probably the most famous one is probably the best fight the the, the English football has ever seen on the football pitch with uh, with with Hunter from from Leeds. Um, uh, and that and that was that was uh, an I'm incredible fight. That, yeah. Yeah, well, he, you know, he, yeah. If anyone's got YouTube and got some time, have a put in Francis Lee and Norman. Has anyone got YouTube while you're watching YouTube? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, not with later on, but um, uh, <laughs> watch the, the Hunter. The, Harry the Hunter, last. Yeah, the Norman Hunter and Francis Lee fight. It was legendary. Yeah. Someone sent me this today, which is just uh, the old Sabutio um, thing there. Of, of if everyone can see that. Uh, it was a Sabutio thing of, of, of Francis Lee playing for Derby against Leeds. And uh, it's probably a, fa a famous photograph um, of them and a video of them two doing that was quite funny, to be honest with you. Because they did have a temper, Francis Lee. Um, it was very, very good. But I should ask, I should ask Jeff Sir, my pre of previous early bird podcast, because he's a huge Sabutio man. He probably, he's probably got those. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's yeah incredible. He's got something like that, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, very, very, not least, but uh, 68 team won the league and Matt and beat Mas, Matt Busby United to the league in the same year they won the European Cup. Yeah, they did. Yep, absolutely. Uh, there's a lot more photos coming out. And like I said, don't worry about likes and views. This isn't about likes, views, and money today. This is, you know, I'm not that the channel's about money, but obviously, there's no, there's going to be no ads on the stream. This is purely a tribute to Francis Lee. And and this is why, yes, you know, you want the views, you want the clicks, but I'm not that. T today is about honouring a legend of our great football club. That's what tonight is all about. So don't worry about views, likes, or anything like that. Um, just, just a, a, a quick one. You know, I was going through it, and like I said, there were some moments you think about it. You know, the '68 up at Newcastle won the cup. And he won the. Uh, FA Cup in 69 um, and obviously then in 69-70 we did the, uh, the unthinkable we won the League Cup and the Cup Winners Cup within the same season um, the first English team to ever win a domestic trophy and a European trophy within the same season um, but again with no history <laughs> we'll need to seriously have a look uh, history um, and again Francis Lee was part of that team that went on and, and broke that record at the time which was just remarkable and th there's just so much of him that you sit there and you think this guy was stood out as Manchester City you've got, I was trying to get some more photos but a lot of them are copywritten so I can't get them um, BBC or City website, rightfully so. I've got theirs. There's a great one of Bell and Summerby together alongside John Mercer with the FA Cup at Wembley in '69. And then obviously, we, we won the Cup Winners' Cup with a 2 1 win over Garnick Zabraz. Um, or I say Zabraz, some will say Zabraz. Um, you're right, I'll let you get away with that one. But he Scored a hundred and um and three hundred and thirty appearances for Manchester City, which is it's a lot. Three hundred and thirty appearances. Um that was I didn't realise he'd made that many appearances. If I'm honest yeah, we did. And a hundred, I think it was hundred and forty eight goals. Yeah. And you think to yourself, wow. Do you know what I mean? It, it's just remarkable. The, the the guy was a goal scorer. The, the guy knew where the back of the onion bag was, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. And football then was very different to football now. Wasn't all this air dynamic football, you know, put spinning them and all that. They were like kicking balls of concrete around. 
I'm it'd be very bath. happy. It'd be, it'd be very happy right now because Galatasaray just. Scored. Oh yeah, and I mean mud baths. They were mud baths. Yeah. Just a little fact: some people don't know how he earned his money. Um, he earned his money in the toilet paper business. <laughs> Believe it or not, he was a um, toilet paper magnet, magno, magnet, magnate. Um, yeah, made his he millions in it, and yeah. yeah um, very weird industry to get into after your football, but I get it. Um, did leave Manchester City sadly and went on to play for um, Derby County football team, football yeah. club, football team, and was great there as well. He, you know, he was. You know what? I, I always think Francis Lee is a player who doesn't get talked about enough about how good he was. Mm. You yeah, always hear like about the greats and Norman Hunter and you hear about um, Georgie Best and I get it, they're all amazing players. But you very rarely hear, and it's so sad this to me, about Colin Bell and Francis Lee in the same breath as some of those greats. You hear about that wonderful Leeds team, you know, again, under another, managed by another former City legend, by by may I add striker Don Reva, mm. who everyone forgets played for Manchester City. So he was in the he was in the Birch he was in the Birch Troutman final. Yeah. Mm. So was about Busby. He was that a city one. player. Yeah. No, I'm 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 just saying. It, it, I, I wish he would. He was talked about more in in that sort of breath than what yeah. than what he was. I don't think he's talked about. It's high regard as what it should be. That's just my personal opinion. Yeah. Anyway, I'm not, you know, you know, people may disagree with me. But hey ho. Um, does anyone remember how much Derby County paid for him? No. They, they won the league with it with him, didn't they, as well? Derby. Mm, Hundred thousand pound. Yeah. Tony Buck was the manager, didn't stand in his way. He no. uh during the 73, 74 season, three days before the start of the season. He was gone, yeah. believe it or not, and uh, went on to play under the late, great Brian Clough. Yeah. Legend. He was oh, a legend, Brian Clough. You think about the managers. John Mercer, Tony Buck, Brian Clough. Played under some absolute legends of the game. Mm. And I know I'm sounding all sentimental, and some fans will be saying, oh, this is all boring, no crap. No. This is history that people don't talk about enough. Um, yeah. Billy Trace, spot on here, by the way. Don Reve played in 55 and 56 finals. Um, he was definitely strong, but not soft and very... He was definitely not soft. No, no, just ask Norman not. Hunter. Yeah. Yes, I'm, yeah. I've heard that, Cade, as well. The next season's Awake is going to be a tribute to the 99 Gillingham um, team. Yes. Really? The away kit, is yes. it? Yeah. Oh, brilliant. I thought, oh, the trunk brilliant. Kit, the, I thought the trunk kit from 18-19 season was, was the tribute because that was 20 years. Yeah, no, I, no. The, I was told the, that, the, was a, that was a, that was a, like a mild tribute to it. Yeah. Okay. The away um, kit. Um, um, I, I, I think it's the 25-year anniversary. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Quarter of a century and all that. <laughs> so I think United are now losing. Ooh. Yeah, three, two. Hey, tell you Casa, what, Colin, uh, Colin Bell and Francis Lee are smiling down on those two right now. Yep. Um, <laughs> Francis Arsenal Lee's been lose. lauded Arsenal by. Too. Yeah, Arsenal I see that. Yeah. They've been yeah. lauded by national media today, which is great. When I talk to all the Oppositionist fans, they usually mention Franny. Good evening, Blue Heart. Hope you are well, mate. Good evening, all. Rest in peace to Franny Lee. Deepest condolences to his friends and family. What a player. Yeah. Absolutely, what a player as well. Um, sadly, obviously, Manchester City stayed within his heart. We had, as Alan mentioned earlier, we had a chairman, Peter Swales. I'm not going to say everything he did was bad, but his tenure at City ended badly. Yeah, very badly. And there was a big campaign. Was it by the Daily Mirror? Was it by the Mirror? Yeah. It was. It was yeah. by the mirror, wasn't it? Yeah. No, I was going to get the little, the little red pins with uh, all the forward yeah, with I was going to get yeah, yeah, yeah. 
uh, the early 90s, there was a big, massive campaign to get um, Peter Swales out and to bring in Manchester City legend Francis Lee as chairman of Manchester City Football Club. Yeah. And it took a long time. It wasn't any easy. Because no, Peter Swales didn't want to give up the reins. No, 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 no. Well, the club, was in a huge, huge, on. the club was in a huge amount of debt. Huge. So, Let me put it this way. He was clinging by his fingernails yeah. going out the boardroom at Main Road. Yeah. And trust me, the boardroom was not very big at Main Road. Just about swing a cat around in it. Ask David Bernstein. He talked about that many, many times. Um... But Francis Lee was was brought in, and the the fans went wild, absolutely wild. Um, and here he was as chairman. Now, obviously, I've not got as clear an image as that one. Uh, that was one of the uh, days. I was that there. Was I was there that day when he came. I was there you remember day. who we played? I can't trust trying to rattle. I can't remember. And I was there that day. I remember that was more it was more important than the game. I remember that? Mm-hmm. It was it, Martin. Can you remember? I'm just gonna wait because right, I've already I've already got all this up. But I want to yeah. see if anybody else has got it. I remember the day. Mm-hmm. I can't remember, but I'm pretty sure I'm pretty They're sure. All saved on here. Anyone? Anybody? Is it gone now? Let's see if anyone's got it in here. Oh, let me just get rid of that photo. Let me put a better one up. There you go. That's a bit clearer. There he is. Who's that next to uh, Franny Lee there? The director, will he? I don't know, but judging by our looks, he's really digging his uh, haircut, his 60s haircut he's been holding on to. (laughs) No, that's how the haircuts were in the night. You should have seen mine. Yeah, Yeah, haircuts are like that, mate. You know what? I probably had a haircut like that at some stage too. Yeah. I haven't looked at a school photo since. <laughs> you always look at your skill photos. Don't you? Let's have a look. Oh dear, dear. Uh, Mate, my, my school my school photos are still hanging up in the hallways of my bloody high school. So, last thing I and a habit of scoring against United <laughs> held a record for most derby goals until the last decade. Yes. Yeah, bloody Rooney took over. Um, um, they're going to be a funny Lee so. statue. Can't wait. There needs to be all three of them. Lee, well, we are doing, we are, we are yeah. doing all three. I, I, yeah. I know, I know. And, it was and as I said, uh, to be honest, we're being respectful. They've got to get it done while Mark Sowerby still, still. And I've on. heard it will be bronze. I did hear that we're going to do yeah, yeah, bronze yeah. as well. Yeah. You should have had a 50th anniversary shirt this season, with Dennis Law back heel. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah do you know what? Blue, it, sky blue with just little heel, like heel foot emojis or something across. <laughs> The shame, you know, it didn't work out as chairman. We'll get on to that as well, because I'm not going to lie. I was one of the people stood outside the main stand getting him out. Yeah, so was I. I'm not going to lie. I did. But we'll get on to it, because I don't think it was all Lee's fault, as I don't think it was all Swales' yeah. fault. City were a mess of a football team. Financially. Yeah. And... Yeah, exactly. The money just was not there. Our hearts go out to the great Francis Lee's family and the rest of Manchester City amongst us. Yeah, exactly. Thank you so much for that. Um, wasn't Swales high up in the FA2? Ooh, that I couldn't... I don't know. I couldn't remember. I'll have a look at that one as I'm going. I didn't see anything on that one. Greetings from France, Germany and the US. What, you all over? What, you bit in each country? Yeah. What the hell you get about? Char- Bobby Charlton, there's it. Was Charlton, it? sorry, Charlton first game. Yep, QPR. Yeah, QPR was the first Monday night game live on Sky, I believe. Correct. I was there for that one. The plot line. Was you were you were just you staring did. at the uh, cheerleaders, you. I know we were, and then the plot line was knocked down. It was we got like an advertising hold at the back for it. Feel a bit ashamed now about how funny he left in '98. Um. Do you, know, do you know what? I, looking at some of it, they are, Daniel. I'm going to come back to it in a minute. Big up, thank you. Um, do I feel, I mean, we'll get into it. I'll talk about it because I've been thinking about this all day. But there were some iconic moments as chairman. And we talked about earlier 
there was this little fella. George Kincladzi in night five, that Alan Ball. Your, your rival. Can we take can we take Alan Ball off? I hated him. I'm not gonna speak ill of the day. I'm not, not, not doing that. I've got oh. a local now let's spend the show talking up for any like not talking down anyone else. I'll, I'll put it this way about like because at the time Brian Horton had been sad, which was a bit harsh in my honest opinion because I thought the football Brian Horton played was fabulous. I know this has just gone to a bit of a podcast, but the season after, um, Francis Lee brought in his best mate. Former England international on ball, former Saints manager. Um, we had no money, and we got offered this little George and my show for Dynamo to Lisa. And Francis lay out his own personal money, dipped in and paid the two million pound to get this boy in the door. Now Francis Lay, I remember a, a, um, an interview we did on BBC. It was called GMR at the time. Greater Manchester Radio. I was on 11.52, Magic 11.52. It was on one of them anyway. And I remember Francis Lee, he was like a kid in a sweet shop talking about Gail. He was absolutely waxing lyrical about this guy. And that's why he shelled out the money. He was like, oh, I, I need this guy in my team. It's, you, know, you know, and he used to laugh and... And then you got that iconic little giggle that he used to do. If I never heard it, it was so iconic, Francis Lee's little giggle. It, it, it was the the exuberation, the excitement on his face talking about King Gladsy was unreal from Lee. It really was. Um, there's another picture of the little Georgian himself, um, which showed his commitment to he wanted, to, he wanted to make it work. Now, obviously, where it did end sour for him, we went through our most manager managerial merry-go-round we've ever done. I think we had, famously, we had seven managers in one season, if you include um, caretaker managers. There was Alan Ball, there was Asa Hartford, there was Phil Neal, and here he is appointing uh, former United player Steve Koppel that there by the way was the main stand that was just above the tunnel director's box that there where it says Manchester City just below that was the tunnel that they came out of if you went a little bit towards Francis Lee's right there you would see my seat uh, when I used to sit in the main stand with my father and my sister um till I moved over to the Kipax um didn't work out obviously we know that now with Steve Koppel but one of the biggest things that Francis Lee did for Manchester City was the redevelopment of the old Kipax. Um, obviously, we all know about the about the Hillsborough disaster, how sad it was, and people lost their lives. Nobody should ever go to a football match and never come home. That should never be. And, you know, big up to, you know, Thoughts and prayers to the family and the victims of that horrible disaster. Um, but the Kipax needed to be torn down. Now, Francis Lee had this image. And again, I remember this interview we did where he talked about the Kipax and how it just came to him and he wanted this, wanted it to be the best, best stand in world football. If you remember, it was so bigged up, Alan. If you remember it, about this new Kipak stand out was yeah. going to be yeah. the, the, the the skyline of Manchester. It was going to be and everything in the middle of Moss Side, and it was bloody awful. I'm not going to lie. It was three tier, cost eleven million quid. Terrible. Um, turn but, main road, turn main road into a patchwork quilt where uh, you had four yeah, different yeah. stands. It was awful. And yeah, no calling. He well no the guy up in the FA, yes. He was. Yeah. He was part of the committee that chose England managers because back then it was a committee. Um, King Clads was where the admission fee alone, spot on. Swales was high up, we just done that one, sorry, Cade. Arsenal losing a second in June United are losing, you got to love it. Actually, it's full, time, it's full time United just lost. 
United have just lost, mate. Three two. Their, their spirit, their spirits at work in the moment. I think. <laughs> <laughs> Colin Bell, <laughs> Francis, Francis Lee. Yeah. Francis pulled a blinder there about King Clancy. One very few bright, yeah. One very few bright spots indeed. That is, yeah. Arsenal beat it's gay. You know what? Francis Lee is doing his he's doing his duty up there with Colin Bell. Yeah. Um, but yes, it was so it just didn't work at the end. And, and there was protest to get him out. And I mean, I mean, Pat, I don't know if you've ever heard of him. We used to stand outside the gate. There was one game, and I always go back to it. I call it the St. Valentine's Day Massacre. February the 14th, 1998, I believe it was. Yeah. Uh, yeah, 1998. Um, Frank Clark was in charge. And we got beat 1-0. And that spelt the end for Frank Clark. If I'm honest, it probably spelt the end for Francis Lee. Mm. And then, obviously, Joel came in. He was out. David Bernstein came in. But his memory on football still stood to this day because what he was honoured with alongside um, the late, you know, the great Dennis Law as well, believe it or not, was Law and Francis Lee both received CBEs as Manchester footballing greats were recognised in the New Year's honour list in 2015. This was, um, he was given a CBE for his work for charities within football and well, well, well deserved absolutely well deserved it really was um his cba was award was in recognition for his charity work law had also been a fundraiser for cancer research uk and he's a patron for meningitis um lee 71 at the time won the title for city in 68 securing hero status he played a key part in the Blues FA Cup success in 69 for the League Cup and the European Cup Winners Cup in 70 against Gornik Zabrez of Poland. He did go on to play his part with England national side as well, reaching the World Cup quarterfinals in 1970. Um, and these were just some of the quotes he mentioned. He said, if you can play naturally, it's the easiest game in the world, said Lee. Um, that was back from the MEN in 2012. He was lucky enough to play in an era when there was so much fun and laughter. After retiring from the game, Lee did become a successful businessman in the paper recycling industry, toilet paper, and returned to City as chairman in 94. However, it was an unhappy time for the club. And by the time he left, they were in the second tier on their way down to the third tier. Lee was accused by some of his critics of going to ground too easily during his playing career was once involved in a fight on the pitch with Leeds defender Norman Hunter during his time at Derby, which we have talked about as well. Um, and this is just these are just some quotes which you'll laugh at. It's a good job I didn't get in the dressing room afterwards as I might have just been coming out on a parole now. <laughs> that was what Francis Lee said about Norman Hunter. It wasn't play acting, you know. He tapped me on the shoulder, hit me, and split my lip with a gold ring. So... That's what I mean. Football was very, very different back then. Very, very different. And here is the late, great Francis Lee receiving his CBA in 2015. I mean, just how proud, the smile on his face. He really, he really was proud of that or not. Um, and it was great to see. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, any more thoughts, gentlemen, on the uh, the late great Francis? Just rest in peace. Rest in peace. He's a le- he always will be a legend of our football club. Yeah, rest in so, peace to a legend. Yeah. And uh, yeah, as you can tell, the spirit, the spirit, the spirits at work tonight. That's for sure. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. Funny saw the ca- the the catering side of the game was something to commit to. Look at it today. He wasn't wrong, was there? Arsenal lost. Oh dear. David Bernstein saved our football club. Yes, he did. Yeah, I, I, that sounds like Francis Lee destroyed it. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. But, but Bernstein, did, 
Bernstein Bernstein stripped it and started again with Joe Royal. And the, the, the Joe Royal and Bernstein saved our football club from oblivion. And that's that is the truth. It was about I mean, I'm not saying you you are saying that, Jack. I'm just saying in a way, football was different. City were a different club back then. You yeah, had no right. money. Yeah. Uh, people laughing when I say this. We were on the verge of getting buckets out. Yeah. Well, you know, Bernstein, buckets out. Bernstein turned it round with Jorel. They did, to be fair. They did turn it oh, round. Oh, yeah, of course they did. And yeah. a successful businessman is amazing what he crammed into a lifetime. It is. Francis Lee kept Jimmy Greaves out of the 70 squad. That's how good he was. I'm just amazed how people don't talk about Bell Lee and some of it with more respect that, that they need to. Yeah. Rest in peace, Franny Lake. Thank you, Super Setter. Thank you, lads, for a great tribute. No worries. Don't need to thank us, mate. How lucky are we? Lee, Bell, and Summer Bet, and Young, Neil Young. Hey, Alan, that'll take you back. Yeah. Neil Young, Mike, Summer Bet, Colin Bell, Francis Lee. Oaks as well, who had 501 appearances. Alan Oaks. Doyle, yeah. Doyle at the back. Yeah. Mickey Doyle, Blue Blood, was a massive City fan. Dave, you know, he. he it's it, the, all all of that side that won that league in in sixty eight and yeah. FA Cup sixty in sixty nine and, and European Cup winners cup in seventy with the League Cup. They all of them are legends. All of them. Just talked about that BB and we and we shelled out his own and how he was like a kid at Christmas morning talking about King Clinton. Yeah. Yeah. He, he was like it was. I think I think I read somewhere didn't he call him his son at some point? Yeah. Gio was like his son. Like, anyone, anyone, and anyone that didn't know, Georgi Glanz is Martin's hero. Yeah. Mm. Uh, add Mike Doll to those three seriously underrated. I yeah. think that team is seriously underrated. That yeah. 68 team is so underrated and he's not given the respect it deserves. And it's ignorant people who say City have no issue because it's so easy to find out. And yeah. I am, I'm so glad City have now commissioned that statue of the three of them. I'm just sad he's yeah. not going to see it. Mm. But it'll be such... I mean, like I said, I was listening to, to some of it today and he was. you can hear the heartbreak in him. Yeah. He's the you last know, one standing. Do you know what? Yeah. I'm so glad he was alive to see us win the treble. I'm so glad. Yeah. And then if you, if you look at if you want to look at it from another perspective with that triumvirate, um, you know Colin Bell wasn't here to see it, but at least we uh, were wearing a shirt with it. There was a direct tribute to him. Yeah, correct. That's 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 good too. That's that's something something you can uh, you, we can live on. Yeah, of course. Um, like I said, uh, good evening, Andy. How are you, mate? Such a shame Franny couldn't see his statue up before he passed. Spot on. Uh, but he will be there. He'll be there in spirit, mate. And some of it will... Yeah. So, uh, I can just imagine how some of it will feel when that gets unveiled. Mm. Um, I just hope while all this building work is going on, that gets done. And we don't know about it. Yeah. Because that needs to get done. The next statue up... I know people will say Gundogan. I know they'll bang on about other players that we've got. The next statue has to be Bell, Lee, and Summerbear. Yeah. I know we have one of the late great Bert Troutman, but that's in the foyer. Unless you're unless you're in the in the corporate the prawn sandwich area where Alan goes, <laughs> you, you you will you will then see the Bert Troutman tribute, but you're not going to see it. It needs to be, this is the one thing that's not annoyed me with City, but that should have been the first statue, Bell Lee or Summerbear. I would have loved the Joe Mercer and Allison statue instead of just a mosaic, but I know we can't just have statues all over the place, but I think it's criminal how Joe Mercer's never had a statue. Yeah. And he's just got a mosaic. The mosaic's nice and he's got Joe Mercer away, but it needs to be more than just a mosaic. And just, yeah. Uh, my granddad gave me his FA Cup final kit when Neil... Wow. Good man, Jack. Lester Fanny, rest in peace. Thank you very much, Wayne. Appreciate that. 
Hi all, rest in peace, Franny Lee. I'll tell you what, he's smiling down him and him and Bell tonight are smiling because they have made United lose and Arsenal lose. Happy days for Blues. Yeah. And like you said, it was good that he saw the treble. Yeah. And do you know what else I thought was good today? The club recognised it. Pep and Ruben Diaz all wearing the black armbands. Good. Wearing them tomorrow. The Brighton game... There will be. I'm hoping. I don't even want a minute's applause at the Brighton game. I want. I want a proper minute silence at the Brighton game. Yeah. I don't want the applause. I want a proper minute's silence for the late great Lee. Right, I'd do both. I'd have the minute silence and then an applause at say at the seven minute mark. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be a good yeah. one. The seven yeah. shirt. Yep, yeah, seven shirt. Yeah, I mean, th that's the other thing that gets when you talk about United, about some of their greats in that seven shirt. That's what annoys me. We've had some absolute world-class beaters. Do you know why? They never get the respect they deserve. Man, do you think Do you think the reason why it's forgotten, that 68 league winning side, is because of what the red light down the road did in the same year? Yeah. Yeah, of course it does. Yeah. Of course it does. Yep. You should I mean, you should read the book um, Man United Ruined, Ruined My Life. It talks about all of that when City were doing well by Colin Schindler. It's a very funny book, but it talks about City and the winning the league in 68 and then four or five days later, <laughs> United go win the European Cup. Um, yeah. Man, yeah. Is that the one Man United Ruined My Life? Yeah, yeah. Really? Brilliant book. Brilliant. Very, Absolutely very great. Yeah, right. A Troutman statue outside is also needed. Yeah. Uh, there is one. It's inside the foyer, Douglas. It's in the. They should put it outside. Yeah, they yeah. should do. Yeah. Still went round to Main Road for the layout protest. Yeah, I did, and I owe my hand up. And yeah. I'm not going to say I'm. I feel bad for it because as a football fan, you want an emotion at the time. Yeah. It was crap. Yeah. But it doesn't mean I. I, I wished any harm on the fella. I, I. 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 I look at Francis Lee as a separate entity from chairman to player. Yeah. I never saw him as a player. My dad, like yeah. I said earlier, because of my dad's illness, I'm, I'm hearing all these stories in so much more yeah. detail than I did previously because you're yeah. remembering more from the past. It's generational. He, is, sees, he sees Franny yeah. Lee as blue collar. You see him as white collar. But but I, I look yeah. at Franny Lee as the chairman mm. who gave me a lot of pain as a child and a teenager. Yeah. But, you know, I know he was still a city great. An absolute legend of this football club and deserves to be treated so. Don't mercy, he had, absolute he had, God. Yeah, he had, he had but blood, yeah, but what you're saying, Martin, is perfect. It's a perfect sort of analogy to today's generation as well, too, where we need to have these statues. They need to be there for the public to see because the young generation need to understand where this club has come from. Yeah. Everyone's past is what is what determines their future. You know, yeah. for me, me personally, I, I just mentioned, I said the first travel <laughs> statue should be outside. Uh, me personally, the Bert Troutman statue should be on one side of the blue carpet and that Bell Leaf uh, Summerby statue should be on the other side. So that every person that walks through that door, it doesn't matter how old they are, whether they're, whether they're five years old or whether they're 95 years old, the first thing they're doing is they're getting um, a first-hand lesson in the history and the culture of the club. Then you understand and you experience the present and the future of the club when you walk through those doors. Correct. Spot on. Totally agree with that. Absolutely yeah. agree with that completely. Um. Yeah, I'm just, um, where's that one gone? It's going now. Ah, I didn't know this. Thank you, Bandit. It's going now for everyone to wear the 72 home shirt as a mark of respect. I don't have it. I can't wear it. I won't fit into it. <laughs> them shirts, but you them, can, mate, you they, can, they, they are fit. available at the club. Is. They are available. They are available at the club shop, mate, but you probably have to cut the collar off. They're not very, they're not very, uh, they're not for the big They're not flattering like on me either, mate. You yeah. ain't getting into them. Nah. You, you know, you know, like you know, like when you put too much dough in the bread maker and it all. Anyway, move on. Um. Hopefully, they ask <laughs> hopefully they ask Franny's family what they like. That's a good shout, Blue Art. Let the family decide. Yeah. Mm. Uh, the only problem, younger fans like me don't have it. Yeah, that's the problem. And uh, fat fans like me won't fit into it. Man City always been my second team. First team I saw last was versus Man City. Dad said Francis Lee was an unreal player. Thoughts with you all. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
Yes, yes, Douglas, how are you, mate? I was at Swales out protest and Leeds, but still respecting them. Exactly. You can protest, but it doesn't mean you, you wish harm on them. You can still respect what they did for the club. Um, rest in peace, Franny Lape. Exactly. Um, rest in peace, Franny Lee says, Ilya, thank you so much. So, Swales did more damage than Lee ever did as chairman. Lee inherited the mess. He did. Um, I still think some of the abuse Swales got was a bit OTT as well, but yeah, yeah, hey, yeah. that's just... I, I, I don't... Again, I mean, we also talked about earlier. 27 caps for his contract, 10 goals. Uh, made his debut against Bulgaria on the 11th of December, 68. Uh, his last cap was for the uh, Three Lions, was against West Germany in a European Cup. You know, were there qualifier on the 29th of April, 72. And his first goal was against the French on the 12th of March, 69. And he uh, was never a substitute, believe it or not. He was a full starter. 27 starts out of 27 caps. Never, ever was a substitute. Scored goals against, like I said, West Germany, uh, Greece, Malta, uh, Rome, uh, Ecuador, Wales, Uruguay, Wales again, Northern Ireland, France. He scored some goals for his country. And that's what needs to be remembered. And believe it or not, was never ever sent off for England. Got three yellows. So yeah, he, he just used to show the referees how everyone was diving. <laughs> but yeah, um, so, so just on that one. Francis Lee loved Man City. He did, and you know what? We're going to end it there. Like I said, tonight is not about views, likes, anything like that. Tonight is just a thank you to the late, great Francis Lee and also to Colin Bell. Two of the three are up there. If you believe in whatever God, heaven, you don't believe in it, fair enough. Um, in whatever religion you believe in, um, they are up where they are. And it's so sad in a way that the late, not the great, not the late, the great Mike Summerbear, NBA, is on his own now. Yeah. But he will he will be there to unveil that, that statue of the three of them. And hopefully yeah. anyway. And yeah, it's but always remember, never take for granted what's going on right now. Never take any player for granted because you don't realise what you had until it's gone. Correct. Old saying, that's very true. So let's just always remember the, the these people, yes, they may not do their job properly all the time. They may not always perform 100%, but Franny Lee was a bloke deep down. Born at West Orton, born locally, died a blue, loved the football club. Did a lot of good for it as well. Yeah. As well as, you know, people might say bad. But you show me someone who's 100% perfect, I'll show you a liar. Yeah. True perfect. Nobody true in this world is perfect. Everyone has room for improvement. True perfection has to be imperfect. Exactly. Perfection is not something that it will, can, can ever, ever be achieved. Because I don't believe there's anything such as perfection in this world. There's always something you can improve on it in all walks of life. And if you all don't, and if you don't um, know enough about Francis Lee and you're, and you're kidding on a string, all you have to do is go onto YouTube and pump in his name, and he'll give you everything you need to see about him. How good he was! He was a brilliant player, brilliant player. Yeah. Well, we almost we almost had perfection last season. Thanks, Southampton. <laughs> we're saying that against Newcastle as well. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Club World Cup. Um, yeah. Absolutely agree, Martin. Um, what we'll do is we're going to stay on five, ten more minutes. We will. Quick thoughts on tomorrow night, boys. Or oh, shoot. I'll be Leipzig away. Uh, Stones oh, wow. and Bernardo are back. Happy days. They have trouble. I'll tell, I'll tell you what, we, we needed Bernardo. We missed him big time. I'm telling you. Because he would have stepped into that midfield role, definitely for me. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to lie. I think this is going to be a very, very good, um, very, very good fixture. Leipzig have 
had another solid start to the, the Bundesliga season. I think some of these new signings that they've made too, like, for example, that Javi Simpsons or whatever his name is, he looks really good. Yeah. Um, curious to see how their uh, defence has progressed, um, given, you know, since Guardiola's left and uh, come to the blue side of Manchester. So I think this could be – I wouldn't be surprised if there's a few goals in this one, guys. No, I, I, yeah, well, I'm hoping we well, – our midfield perform, which they didn't um, last week, so. Yeah. Martin, you met me and don't and you don't believe in perfection. <laughs> uh, what's the name between United and the Triangle? United have triangle has three points. Bob um, very good. <laughs> um yeah, um I mean, just so you know, they have only um they have only just traveled out tonight. They flew out, I think, seven o'clock ish yeah, tonight yeah. from Manchester. Because there is a very there's there's dangerous winds over in Leipzig at the moment, so I think a lot of the planes currently landed in Dresden, yeah. uh, which is about an hour away. Yeah. So I think the plan is at the moment is to maybe land in Dresden and get the coach over over to um, Leipzig, or whether they have gone straight into Leipzig, I don't know. But um, so yes, but the good news is tonight Stones and Bernardo have travelled. And a decision will be made tomorrow on whether they take part. Has been confirmed. Rodri will start. 100% Pep has confirmed that. But the biggest thing tomorrow is they will wear black armbands and they will get three points. But they're great for Annie Lee, who yeah. deserves it. And I cannot wait to celebrate that with everyone tomorrow. Um, can't wait to do whatever honour tribute we do against Brighton. It needs to be it needs to be done. Um, I'm sure it will. Before, before, pardon? I'm sure it will. Yeah. Wait until you see an Arna. Okay. Speaking of front it, oh, that'd be amazing. Get a penalty tomorrow when they all do that dive. Yeah. <laughs> hey. The way you yeah. talk about Franny Lee's diving, it makes me wonder if uh, it, he was one of uh, Neymar's first heroes. Oh no 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 no! I don't mean divers <laughs> and dive in the box. Like I said, he he he, he was protesting to a, a referee that much that he actually showed him how he dived, and he oh. literally did a clingsman. He stood there and just went. Yung, yeah, like the clingsman celebration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, it was yeah. like, oh no, it wasn't a celebration. It was a no, but um, it's, it's similar. It was yeah. a protest to the ref. Yeah, to yeah. George. Was like, ref, this dive. is what he's done. Yeah, George Best that could dive. He just he had a yeah. go at him. Yeah, yeah, love it. You know, yeah. um, thanks, Franny. We loved you. Wait till we've just done that one. We owe it to Franny to score more penalties. Super City or Nana is dire. Yes, we were a big club before the takeover. Spot on. First team to win the a domestic trophy and the European trophy. Um, let's win this one for Franny Lake. Spot on. Let, well um, done, boys. The best way, the best way to put it is everybody wants to be a small club these days. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'll have a look at that. Apparently someone just put that. They have. Um, there has been a um, thing put out from live. As a, I will have a look because someone just messaged me that privately as well. Um, I just want to say because I don't know. Yeah, I'm just gonna have a look. I, I want to read that to everyone. Um, where is it? RB Leipzig. RB Leipzig. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to try and translate it. Anna. Is it? I don't know because that's from 2021. But where's the exact one? RB Leipzig English. So look. Ah, is it RB Leipzig in English? Right. Okay. Well, I'm just, che I'm just checking it now. Yes, yeah, sorry. Might be. It might be. It might be. I can't see anything. Andy, which one's it on, mate? Can you send me... Oh, here it is. We would like to offer our sincere condolences to the relatives and friends of Francis Lee, as well as the entire Manchester City family. Rest in peace, Francis Lee. That's, that's nice. Where yeah. was that on, mate? Where was that? That was um, earlier on. It was yesterday. Yesterday, okay. Yeah. So it's on the RB Leipzig English part as well. 
They oh. talk about Josh Gabardio. They've got a few injuries at the moment um, out. So have we. Well, well I, I, I was a back. They're making their way back. Otherwise, we wouldn't be on the plane. I was uh, a back, mate. Uh, Lee, one of them. Mr. Fanny wants... Yeah, Danny. Looks like Danny Olmo's team. out for the... Danny Olmo and Timo Werner. Yeah, he's definitely out. Once yeah. brought me in my classroom because he told me I was a big blue, fair, lovely fella. I was proper starstruck. I get like that now still. He was a great player, unique in his way of playing. And he, he, But he also knew how to distinguish himself off the pitch. A huge gent, a huge... Do you know what? I did meet him once and I, 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 I've got to be honest, I was like, oh my God, this is like chairman of Sitter. And I met him at a um, supporters meeting. You know when they do that... Because he used to do like the kids' uh, parties at Christmas, and he came to one of them, and I was like, "Wow!" And he was like, "Nope, don't worry about it." And he just treat you like a like a normal human being. There was none of this. There's too much of this. We, we forget, and I think I'm like that with anyone who I see who's a city player or anyone. I get all starstruck and get nervous around them, and they just he made you feel so. Relaxed and no, you don't need to be. I'm just chairman of sitting there, normal person. I'm a chatterman. So yeah, out of top of watching about the audio of the Diaz goal. Oh, that's gonna roll on and roll on and roll on. It ain't what, was it, what was the audio, mate? Because I've been just been trying to steer well. Clear it's all over. It's just, it's, oh, it's... You don't hear from the referee at all, hardly. The referee. But the PGMOL guy and the VAI guy, they know they've messed up. There's a, there's a few F words in there like, oh, my, delay the game, delay the game. And he's like, we can't. They've already restarted. He's like, what, you've given it as offside? He went, because he's like, no, it's clear. It's a goal. Like, you know, it's totally fine. And he went, huh? it's just confusion to hell, mate. It doesn't look good. It really well, doesn't look they're going to get booted out with those, those two for doing that. It's not good. It's not yeah. good. The funny thing about that dive was that France was accused of diving himself. He had a great sense of humour. Did. Good luck reading it. It's in German. No, I found it in English. Hey. Hey, I've got a GCSE in German. MCFC 9320. Alex, I'm older than most. I remember Lee, some of being Bell. Let us educate our youth. We, are, we were elite in the 60s and 70s. And in the early 1900s, record attendance, first major club to win uh, FA Cup before Arsenal were even invented, before United. So a lot of stuff we did. Highest league, uh, highest attendance ever in English football outside of Wembley Stadium. Sorry, Spurs, you can't have Wembley. It wasn't your stadium. <laughs> the AR and refs are dire. Fun fact, Peter K was once employing Fanny's top. Was it? Wow, I didn't know that. I'm going to see him, Franz. I'm going to see him, I'm going to see him Peter K next year in uh, yeah. at the MEM. Yeah. The AO Arena. Tomorrow night, Thursday night, I'm going to see Paul Smith. Played first in team Blackman. cricket for, played first team cricket for West Dalton uh, for years, Francis Lee. With decent cricket. But yeah. Um, thank you all for joining us. If anyone, it, it's not, you just pay your respects. Don't let anyone ever tell you about Harris because we have a rich history and it deserves to be shouted out from the rooftops. Our history may not be as big as some clubs, but every club has an history. Ours is a lot richer than people give it credit for. Yeah. Sadly, some people think football began in 1992 and it didn't. Mm. Barely didn't. So just laugh at them. Let their ignorance play out because that's what they are. They're ignorant. But thank you for joining us. We'll be back tomorrow night at around about quarter to 11 ish um, for the Leipzig post match. Yep. Because um, obviously I need to set up and everything else. So half 10, quarter to 11 ish, we'll get them live. Um, then on Thursday or Friday, there's going to be a recording of the Arsenal preview out. I'm going to be doing that with Premza. Uh, yeah. Premza. Um, Big Steve, sorted out for me. Premza is going to come on. 
I'm going to he's going to do a review on here and then I will go onto Prem's channel as well. Um uh, was gonna be tomorrow, but he's doing something with Dan Pot. So um I think I'm going on Friday night some point with Premza to do their preview. And he will be it'll be a recorded video, not live, but we'll do it as a premiere. Um and then we'll be back for the Arsenal preview. So loads coming up tomorrow night, Leipzig pre uh, Leipzig post match. Then we'll do the Arsenal preview with Premzi will come out, and then we'll do the Arsenal post match as well. So yeah, loads and loads and loads going on. I was on City actually the day. Want to go back and check that out on the panel show, um, and also I was on PD Proudlock's channel last night doing the Premier League review show as well. If you want to go and check that out, um, over on friend of the channel PD Proudlock. But yes. Big up to everyone. Um, rest in peace, Francis Lee. Yeah. You are a Manchester City legend. Always be a Manchester City legend. And I hope and I'm sure the Blues will get about three points for you tomorrow night. We're not going to end the normal way we would do. We're just simply going to go very silent. I want to thank Alan. I want to thank Pat for joining us. But rest in peace, the late, great Francis Lee. See. Thank you.